You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. i just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Songs of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, I've battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it there to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable everyday carry or a tough as nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your riding into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com.
You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. My name is Jesse. I'm a United States Special Forces widow. This gives me a unique perspective on the world around us. If you're willing to listen, I'll tell you how I see it, and I won't pull any countries. This is my POV, which stands for Point of View. All right, how y'all doing out there tonight? Yes, it's Jesse. I'm so happy to be back with you. And I do feel kind of sorry about Friday night show being cut a little short, a little rushed, and just plain a little chaotic. So I do apologize if it felt a little off because, well, I felt off my game. It wasn't, I was away from the studio trying to do something on the road. Because, well, family obligations do come up. All right. We have a lot to talk about. Yep, there's the show prep. We have Qatar or Qatar. And everything going on over there. We have... The fight against Dash. We have Rex Tillerson calling out China. We have Nikki Haley calling out the entire Human Rights Council. And that's where I'm going to start. Because I think this is a big issue. And I don't think it's getting the coverage it deserves. I think the wind is being sucked out of the air by all of the probably nothing burger stuff that's coming down on DC this week. So what can I say? It's probably going to be a nothing burger. I don't know what else to say about it. So we're going to start with Nikki Haley and discuss her efforts. To try and get the United Nations Humanitarian Council back on track. All right. She doesn't like some of the goings on. And I'm going to let her tell you in her own words. And this audio is courtesy of Fox News. You know, and now we're looking at all these areas where they've had human rights issues that have led to conflict. What we have seen in the cases of Venezuela now, which is an issue, is when I brought it up in front of the the Security Council, they said this should come up in front of the Human Rights Council. Well, why hasn't that happened? Because Venezuela sits on the council. How can you have a Human Rights Council that has Venezuela and Cuba on it? It just doesn't make sense. I agree. It doesn't make sense. How can you have Venezuela and Cuba Two countries who are known for holding political prisoners in prison without a trial, without charges, be part of a conversation on human rights? I'm sorry. That would like that would be like asking Stalin or Lenin to be part of a conversation on human rights. That's not cool, kids. Way not cool. All right. I am making my way over to the KLRN Radio chat room. 
I was not able to be there Friday because, well, bandwidth. There's only so much bandwidth to go around, and my broadcast was sucking it all up. So, I am over there now, and as always, you can find me on Twitter, at Jesse's POV, and you can also email me at the station if you listen via podcast, which I know a number of you do. Yes, a number of you do. You are more than welcome to shoot me an email. Jesse's POV at klrnradio.com and I do answer each and every email personally. I just can't believe sometimes who the members of some of these councils are. How did Venezuela and Cuba become members of the Human Rights Council? Is that the fox guarding the hen house? Because it sure sounds it to me. I mean, that's, I swear that's the epitome of the fox guarding the hen house. Now, don't forget, right after my show, we've got the Stafford Voice. And then Stafford Voice is followed up by America Off the Rails. So I do have both my Twitter and the chat room open, so you're welcome to interact with me. All right. I've got one more audio clip with Nikki Haley as to why she is going to Geneva to address the Human Rights Council in person. And again, this is also audio from Fox News. So we're going to go to Geneva, talk to them about what we think the Human Rights Council does well, talk to them on where improvement is needed, and decide our status after that to see if they're really serious about human rights or not. Yeah, are they serious? Nikki Haley, longtime fan, my friend. You keep doing what you're doing. All right, moving right along. Secretary of Defense Mattis and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson were both in Australia for a joint ministerial meeting. It's called Osmond. And there were a lot of things that came out of that. Now, keep in mind that uh, keep in mind that Australia is, well, halfway around the world and many hours ahead. So, and there's several audio clips that have already been widely played, but I thought Rex Tillerson's take on China was amazing. And he summed it up in just a few beautiful words. China is a significant economic and trading power, and we desire a productive relationship. But we cannot allow China to use its economic power to buy its way out of other problems, whether it's militarizing islands in the South China Sea or failing to put appropriate pressure on North Korea. They must recognize that with a role as a growing economic and trading power comes security responsibilities as well. All right, so they feel that just because they are growing economic power, they don't have to play by the rules. And I think that's just absolutely hogwash. I'm sorry, South China Sea is a major issue. I don't always report on it, 
because it isn't always a huge thing that's going on. Now, China, oh, just get a load of this one. China is upset at Mattis's irresponsible remarks on the South China Sea. Mattis was accused of accused China of having contempt for other nations' interest and disregard disregarding international law. Okay, we are not the country that went out and made islands where there were none. We are not the country that went out and told the uh, International Court of Arbitration to take a hike. We are not the country that said, so what? We actually attempted to stabilize things and we are the country that is trying to protect freedom of navigation. All right, I also have something on UAE, Bahrain, etc., cutting ties with Qatar. And it's over implications with Dash. Look, I will see if I can get you the audio queued up. However, I don't have it prepped. If not, I will try and get it on the other side of the break. Hey, I got to do all my own. I am a one-man band. So... And I do a lot of it myself. Every once in a while, someone will throw me a story or a clip that's worth using. All right. I think I've got the audio queued up. At least for the... Afghan... Uh, for the cutter. A brief comment on the late breaking news that you just... Uh referred to in terms of diplomatic relations between GCC countries and Qatar. Uh, I think, as I understand it, from what I have, a little bit I've read uh, since the uh, actions were taken, I think what we're uh, witnessing is a, a growing list of some irritants in the region that have been there for some time, and obviously they have now bubbled up to a level that countries decided they needed to take action uh, in an effort to have those differences addressed. We certainly would encourage the parties to sit down together and address these differences. Uh, and we, if there's any role that we can play in terms of helping them address those, uh, we think it is important that the GCC remain uh, unified. I do not expect that this will have any I'm going to pause it for just a moment. The GCC is the Gulf Cooperation Council. It is a Middle East uh, coalition of countries significant impact, if, if any impact at all, on the unified, the unified 
fight against terrorism in the region or globally. All of those parties you mentioned have been quite, uh, quite unified in the fight against terrorism and the fight against Daesh, ISIS, uh, and have expressed that most recently in the summit uh, in Riyadh. Um, as to the Afghanistan policy, which is still under development and review, so there is no conclusion, and I will leave it to Secretary Mattis to answer more directly what the military plans are for this year uh, to stabilize Afghanistan. I think clearly, though, uh, what we do understand... All right. I don't really want to hear Tillerson talk on military matters. Let's let Mattis do that. We will come to that shortly. But... Let's just put it this way. He basically said, everybody, calm down. Take a deep breath and calm down. Well, guess what? The die is cast. We broke international relations with Iran in 1979. We still don't have diplomatic relations, official diplomatic relations with Iran. Now, let's take a listen to what Mattis had to say in response to these same events. In regard to the implications for the counter-ISIS fight, I am confident there will be no implications uh, coming out of this diplomatic situation uh, at all. Uh, and I say that uh, based on uh, the commitment that each of these nations that you just referred to have made to this fight. Uh, as far as the, uh, the situation vis-a-vis -vis Iran, uh, I believe Iran's actions uh, speak louder than anyone's words, and they are going to incite the, uh, the international community in that region uh, to try to block them in the various destabilizing efforts they are, are undertaking right now from Syria, where Assad remains in power today, because of Iran's actions to Yemen, where they have been contributing uh, in an unhelpful way to a war that is uh, marooning millions of people uh, and leaving them vulnerable to uh, starvation and health problems and violence. So I, I think it's Iran's uh, actions that will speak most loudly. And the diplomatic situation, uh, it will probably take some time. I don't know how long, uh, but it will re be resolved. As far as Afghanistan goes, uh, as Secretary Tillerson said, the policy is under review. But at the same time, we're up against an enemy that knows that they cannot win at the ballot box. And you, you think we have to sometimes remind ourselves of that reality. Uh, that's why they use bombs, because ballots would ensure they never had a role to play. And based upon that foundation, that they cannot win the, uh, the support, the affection, the respect of the Afghan people. We will stand by them. It's been a long, hard fight. Uh, Australia has been in this one from the very beginning, and, uh, and the fight goes on. But the bottom line is we're not going to surrender civilization to people who cannot win at the ballot box. Thank you. All right. I thought that was well spoken. Now, insofar as Mattis... Uh, Secretary of Defense Mattis had an interesting thing to say about the humanitarian issues in fighting Daesh. We have relented not one bit in terms of trying to do everything humanly possible to protect the innocent on the battlefield, because the battlefield, the way the enemy has chosen to fight, is also a humanitarian field from our point of view. It is the ISIS that forces innocent people to stay where they choose to fortify. So our intent is to do everything possible to, to keep them alive, to protect them, but at the same time, we're going to have to take that caliphate down or the attacks that you've seen going on around the world that you all have reported on will continue. This is not the end state. The end state is where we work together for reconciliation, uh, for what the diplomats will have to do, but clearly the enemy has got to be taken out uh, by military means where they are powerful enough to uh, cause these attacks on others. And we can't sit idly by and let them hold it. I think that answers your question. 
All right, so like I said, we can't sit idly by and wait for Dash to do anything. All right, here's one more audio clip, and then we're going to mosey right along. President Trump, when he came into office, wanted an accelerated campaign against the enemy. Uh, this is an enemy against all civilization. It's a reason there are 66 nations that have joined the campaign, uh, besides the Arab League, the European Union, the Interpol, and NATO. And in this campaign where before we were shoving them from one town to another and they're falling back, we now take the time to invest the town and make certain the foreign fighters cannot escape to return to Paris, France, to, uh, to Australia, to wherever uh, they came from and bring their message of hatred and their skills back to those places and attack innocent people. All right. He wants them to fall where they stand. What was that, host kitty? Hey, Mattis, you got host kitty's vote, and you got mine too, for that matter. All right. Moving right along. We are coming up on the bottom of the hour. This major conference, I could have pulled 30 audio clips and still missed some good ones. It is incredible the amount of stuff they said. I do have one thing I want to say with clarity. Yes, I know about the shooting in Orlando. I repeat, the shooting in Orlando had no apparent terrorist ties. I re- let me repeat that. The shooting in Orlando had no ties to terrorism. This was a former employee who went in to kill his former co-workers. Nothing more. Absolutely nothing more. This, the shooting in Orlando, while tragic, was not a terrorist attack. Do you get this, folks? The shooting in Orlando was not a terrorist attack. All right. As always, you can find me on Twitter at Jesse's POV. You can shoot me an email at the station, JesseBOV at KLRNRadio.com. And I will see you on the other side. You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hey, this is John Preston, Marine Combat Veteran and Pacific Records Recording Artist. Hi, just reaching out to have you check out our new album, Battle Cry, Songs of America's Heroes, an album featuring phenomenal other combat veteran artists like Scott Brown of the Scooter Brown Band, Brian Weaver, Rowdy Johnson, just an incredible mix of people. This is all veterans telling our stories and our lives, and we're giving 100% of our proceeds to the Valkyrie Initiative to help veterans and first responders integrate back into society. I, myself, 
myself have battled with post-traumatic stress for many years and lost my own brother, a Marine Corps veteran, to suicide. I ask that you step with us and make this happen. We are in pre-order right now and release on March 17th. Go to iTunes, go to Amazon, bye, bye, bye. We plan on making the charts and making it at a very high level, and your support right now makes a difference. This is the release of my new song, Superman Falls, which is actually about the loss of my own brother, which happened last year. And I would love for everyone to check it out, to listen, and hopefully it'll make a difference in many lives. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now, and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. It takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our riding into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable riders to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a rider's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. Here's George Foreman with InventHelp. Hi, I'm George Foreman. Do you have an idea for a new product or invention? People ask me all the time, George, how do I get my idea in front of companies? How do I get a patent? What do I do next? Do you have the same questions? I'll tell you like I'll tell them all. Call my friends at InventHelp. Call InventHelp today for free information. InventHelp has been helping inventors for more than 30 years and has sales offices nationwide. InventHelp can submit your invention to companies who are interested in receiving new ideas. If you have an idea and want to try to patent it and submit it to companies, you should call InventHelp today for free information. Listen, I can't guarantee a company will be interested in your idea, but I believe every inventor deserves the opportunity to step into the ring and take their best shot. Put InventHelp in your corner. Get your free inventor's information. Call 1-800-353-6490. That's 1-800-353-6490. Again, 1-800-353-6490. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. for hanging in there with me over that commercial break while we paid them bills. Yes, now, I found the comments that I believe were the ones that made China call Rex Tillerson's comments reckless. Let's take a quick listen. The U.S. and Australia also reaffirmed our commitment to freedom of navigation and overflight, other lawful uses of the seas, particularly in the South China Sea and elsewhere, to ensure unimpeded flow of lawful commerce and a rules-based order. We oppose China's artificial island construction and their militarization of features in international waters. 
All right. So Tillerson doesn't like China's real world version of Minecraft any more than anybody else does. All right. Speaking of China, let's stay in the Asia Pacific region for you. Regular listeners of my show know that is the sound of quackers, a.k.a. Kim Jong-un. North Korea has denounced the latest round of sanctions placed on it by the United Nations Security Council as a hostile act. No surprise there, folks. Could have written that press release myself. And will continue developing its nuclear arsenal at a rapid pace. No kidding, could have written that one too. The UN Security Council unanimously adopted a resolution expanding sanctions on the isolated Asian country on Friday, adding 18 individuals and organizations to the North Korean government in an ever-growing blacklist. But North North Korean government, of course, denounced these sanctions as a crafty, hostile act with the purpose of putting a curb on the Democratic People's Republic of Korea's buildup of nuclear forces, disarming it and causing economic suffocation to it. Oh yes, whenever sanctions and pressure may follow, we will not flinch from the road to build up nuclear forces, which was chosen to defend the sovereignty of the country and the rights to national existence, and will move forward towards the final victory. That is a direct quote from an official from the KCNA news agency, a.k.a. the mouthpiece of the North Korean government. The latest sanctions had the agreement of both the United States and China, the latter being North Korea's only notable ally. However, I'm not so sure that that's true. But in April, U.S. President Trump said he was working with his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, to solve the North Korean problem. Beijing has halted imports of coal shipments from North Korea, which is one of the isolated country's few sources of income, but has taken a less confrontational confrontational approach than Washington with calls for more dialogue. Trump doesn't want to talk, kids. He wants to get this done. North Korea accusing China and the U.S. of railroading and railroading and enforcing the latest rounds of sanctions after having drafted it in the back room at their own pleasure. It is a fatal miscalculation if the countries even think they can delay or hold in check the eye-opening development of the DPRK's nuclear force for even a moment. Of course, that is a DPRK spokesperson. Tensions have been rising on the Korean Peninsula since President Trump adopted a much harder line on Pyongyang than his predecessor. In April, Trump dispatched the aircraft carrier USS Carl Vincent along with its strike group to the Korean Peninsula for joint drills with the Japanese and South Korean militaries, as well as deploying the THAAD anti-missile system in South Korea. This is a decision that has been criticized by both the Russian and Chinese governments. Now, keep in mind here, folks, North Korea objecting to sanctions... That's been going on since 2006. Oh, you didn't know it had been going on that long? Trust me. It's been going on that long. Now, how does Japan Japan feel about this? The latest ballistic missile fired by Kim Jong-un regime plunged into the Sea of Japan. Oh yeah, Shinzo Abe has described such North Korean launches as a grave threat to our country and absolutely not acceptable. But such warnings appear to be causing little concern on the streets of Tokyo. I don't feel any threat, nor has it affected my daily life, said a a Japanese office worker. It was a sentiment shared by many in the city's Ginza district. North Korea can already strike anywhere in Japan with its missiles. But Shunji Hirawa, an expert in North Korean diplomacy at Nanzan University in Nagoya City, said, while many people in Japan do feel a sense of sane danger, I don't think they feel the war is very imminent. 
Fortunately, it's not right now as if there's a clear and present danger that is sending people into panic. However, people have hard, started to understand it might be possible for North Korea to obtain these capabilities. Pyongyang has been launching a series of missiles as well as carrying out two nuclear tests since the beginning of 2016. Now, of course, Secretary of State Rex Torreson has declared on multiple occasions the era of America's strategic patience is over. And he has also said that military action is not, I repeat, not off the table. Of course, North Korea is like, we're doing what we want. You guys have fun over there. So, like I said, while North Korea is taking up a great deal of time, Oh, and by the way, of course, they called the U.S. ICBM interceptor test a military provocation. Guys, guys, guys. Our test was on our land, threatened no one else, and didn't splash down in anybody's economic, exclusive economic zones. So I don't get why you're calling this a threat. A provocation, of course. Part of me would like to say, just get it over with. Let's reunify the peninsula. But I don't know if that would actually happen if we kick things off. And I don't want to see us go it alone. I want to see us go with the backing of China. Because I'd rather have them on our side than against us. Now, China's been backing away from trade a little bit here. So, who has been stepping up to the plate? Who? Did you guess Putin and Russia? Oh, yeah. Putin. Remember I reported a while back that North Korea and Russia now had a ferry running twice a week between them? Oh yes, they do. Well, I will say that there's probably some cars and passengers and quote-unquote vacationers, translation, Pyong pampered pooches of Pyongyang. I don't think... I have reason to believe, and this is just pure speculation on my part, I highly doubt that entire ferry is filled with tourists. Now, there's several other things going on in North Korea that I want to bring you, to your attention. Oh yeah, this ain't the end of it. I don't know that I don't know that we'll ever hear the end of North Korea until there is no more North Korea. So, I don't know how else to put this to you kids. No, I am not trying to alarm anybody. However, comma, I do think Quackers will keep on quacking. All right, now that I finally got my paperwork straight. As China pulls trade from North Korea, Russia gets cozy with Kim Jong-un as China responds to President Trump's call to pressure North Korea to curb its rogue weapons program. Russia has stepped in to help the hermit nation stay connected to the rest of the world. Trade between Russia and North Korea increased by 73% during the first two months of 2017, compared with the same period the year before, boosted mostly by increased coal deliveries. China, North, China, North Korea's chief political and economic benefactor said it had curbed coal deliveries to North Korea and taken other steps aimed at persuading North Korean leader Kim Jong-un to halt its nuclear development. 
a Russian company, Investroy, Investroy Test, opened a new ferry line in May, connecting the Russian port of Vladivostok to the North Korean city of Rajin. The ferry is aimed at Chinese tourists seeking to visit Vladivostok by the sea. Why would a Chinese tourist go to North Korea to catch a ferry? Russia and North Korea have reached a labor immigration agreement to expand a program that already employs 40,000 North Korean laborers in Russia's timber and construction industries. This is a major source of foreign currency for Kim Jong-un's government. So, what else can be done? Of course, we've got the sanctions. And then I think we may end up having to sanction Russia. I'm not kidding. Yes, there is a new Cold War coming on. And Russia is, again, are on the opposing side. I would love to say they're not, but they are. Now, Chinese officials have warned they will consider halting crude oil deliveries to North Korea if it engages in more nuclear or long-range missile tests as a result. Gas prices in North Korea, which have been stable for months, my friends, tripled overnight. Tripled. You heard me. So... Now, no one knows if China really cracks down would, if the Russians would be able to completely backfill the gap. No one knows. North Korean prices for food and fuel have spiked re recently, but it's unclear why. Well, I'm going to say the supply is down because of sanctions and it's being diverted to the military population, and it could be hoarding in, a, in fear of war. So, the North Korean currency, the yuan, has been so stable, whatever's going on is not having a big effect. Of course, this is a government-controlled, manipulated currency. The North also trading with Russia's trade with North Korea is a, appears to be rise, rising. However, even at $130 million annually, it's still tiny compared to China's 6.6 .6 billion in trade. All right, 6.6 .6 billion. All right, what else is going on with quackers? North Korea rejects South Korean groups offer of help with a malaria outbreak. A South Korean civic group which offered to provide anti-malarial malarial supplies to North Korea said the North has rejected the proposal because of the South's support of the new UN sanctions. The rejection could complicate efforts by South new liberal president Moon Jae-in to expand civil exchanges with North Korea as a way to improve strained bilateral ties. All major cooperation programs between the rivals remain stalled amid international standoff over North Korea's nuclear and missile programs. In late May, Moon's government allowed Seoul-based Korean sharing movement to contact North Korea. It was the South Korean government's first approval of a cross-border civilian exchange since January 2016. The group subsequently exchanged emails with North Korea and proposed to deliver anti-malarial items such as insecticides, diagnostic kits, mosquito repellent to North Korea, and mosquito repellent to North Korea this week. But North Korea told the group on Monday that it won't allow the visit because of UN sanctions against Nor the North adopted last week that South Korea has vowed to implement. Despite Lack of South Korean assistance to North Korea has in recent years reported declining cases of malaria, thanks largely to anti-malarial aid programs by international organizations. 
The UN Security Council, of course, added 15 individuals to their sanctions list. Just since May 10th, folks, North Korea has test-fired three ballistic missiles in an apparent show of its resolve to expand its weapons arsenal to cope with what it calls U.S. hostility. Moon's government has said it will consider expanding civilian exchanges with North Korea while sternly dealing with its missile and other weapons tests. How you deal with someone sternly while you still let them shoot off rockets in your backyard is beyond my comprehension. All right. Two more North Korean stories. And then we will move on. Yes, two more. Just got to track one down. One, One escaped. One escaped. I'm looking for it. All right. This isn't the one I was going with, but we're going to go with this one next while I find the other one. Delegates of North and South Korea may meet for the first time in, a nearly, in nearly a decade to observe the anniversary of a historic inter-Korean summit on June 15th if Seoul approves an application for a visit. South Korean... Members of the June 15th Declaration Committee might be celebrating the anniversary of the document signing with their North Korean counterparts in Pyongyang. Applied to the committee's request, the first time Pyongyang has done so since Seoul's Unification Ministry approved civilian outreach to North Korean groups May 26th. According to the committee, the North Koreans said it would be difficult to meet in Kaesong and suggested Pyongyang event again. Instead, since the event is being held in the North, we decided to respect their opinions and decided to hold it in Pyongyang. The group will travel in mid-June, pending approval from Seoul. The South Korean committee last held a joint observation of the anniversary with the North in June 2008. during the administration of conservative President Lee. A downturn in relations expected by the the, torpedoing of the South Korean warship, the Chonan, and the showing of a South Korean island brought an end to the annual gathering. But Dove President Moon has pledged to take a more conciliatory approach. Even South Seoul's new spy agency chief, Su Hoon, said Thursday he would shut down any domestic intelligence operations and undertake reform of South Korea's National Intelligence Service. This is going off the rails. Sorry, Rick, don't mean to steal your line, however, comma. All right, I got, I want to find the one other story I really wanted to cover tonight. South Korean rescues four North Korean seamen. A South Korean naval crew rescued four North Korean sailors drifting near the eastern coast of the peninsula. Seoul's Unification Ministry spokesman Lee told reporters at a regular briefing Monday that a total of four North Koreans were traveling on two separate ships when they were found in the East Sea. Our Navy rescued one crew member on a ship June 2nd. Three other crew members on a second ship were rescued June 3rd. The crew members are undergoing a joint government investigation. After the investigation, we will take steps in coordination with their wishes. The North Koreans are offered an option to stay in South Korea or return to the North to their families. On May 27th, South Korea did South Korea's Coast Guard rescued six North Korean sailors in the East Sea who were returned last week to the North upon their request. So the North the South does treat people who stray into their territory rather kindly. All right. Justice gone wrong. 
An outspoken Pakistani student killed by a lynch mob was falsely accused of blasphemy, according to an official report that added his murder was organized by faculty members and rival students. <coughs> Mashal Khan, Mashal Khan, 23, was stripped, beaten, and shot before being thrown from the second floor of his hostel at Abdul Wali Khan University in northwest Mardan. This is in Pakistan. The killing led to a national outcry after a video of it went viral. The country's top court ordered a form or ordered the formation of a joint investigation team comprising police and intelligence agencies. No direct or indirect evidence supporting blasphemy allegations against Khan or his friends was received. The investigation said the killing was instigated by members of Khan's own secular Pakhtun Student Federation who felt threatened by his growing prominence as a critic of rising fees and alleged corruption at the, uni at the university as well as the institution's staff. Marshall's father, Muhammad Labakal, told reporters that the findings had vindicated his son. This proves my son was not a blasphemer. He called for the suspects to be tried by a military court. Of course, for those of you who don't know, blasphemy is a hugely sensitive charge in conservative Muslim Pakistan and can carry the death penalty. Of course, as we've seen here, even unproven allegations can cause mob lynchings and violence. All right, folks, that's all the time I have for tonight. Please stay tuned for the Stafford Voice. And as always, you can find me on Twitter at Jesse's POV. You can find me, you can email me at the station, Jesse's POV at KLRNRadio.com. Don't forget to sign up for the KLRN Radio newsletter. We've got some big stuff afoot. You'll be coming soon. Because for those of you who don't know, the station's first anniversary is coming up quickly. It's August 1st. No telling what station manager Anne has in store. On that note, folks, yeah, you regulars know what's coming. <laughs>